Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at the RB35S from FreeSky. So this video is gonna be a little bit different to my usual introduction videos. Usually in those, I go a bit in depth about how to flash stuff, how to update things. But what I'm actually gonna do with this is separate it out into multiple videos, basically because I think people miss the information that they need. So if they wanna know how to flash it and it's part of the intro video, they may miss it. So it's really for just making the content easier to find for people. And if this is successful, then I'll probably do more videos like that in the future. So before we get started, this has been provided by FreeSky for a review, but I think by now you hopefully know that I'm honest about what I say about things. So the first thing, what is the redundancy bus system? So what we're gonna do is head over to the web browser and this is just FreeSky's website. And on the homepage at the moment, there is flight safe systems. But if you look in products it will be in here as well so you've got flight safe systems here with all the different things so let's just click on that and see what they do my internet is being very slow today for some reason so apologies for that but anyway this is the flight safe system which the rb35s is a part of now if you've used this sort of thing before you you know what it does but basically it is providing redundancy for your RC aircraft. So RB is redundancy bus. And what it basically means is we can use multiple receivers uh, connected to this thing. So if a receiver goes out, then it's covered by another receiver, maybe even a, a third receiver. There's also power redundancy. On some of the systems, you can specify voltages for different servos. Other features include things like checking how much current the servos are drawing just to make sure it doesn't um, overload them, that sort of thing. There's a, a lot that goes into this. So if you're flying larger aircraft, so sort of big scale things, turbines, then this is where something like this is gonna come in useful. If you're flying smaller stuff, then you probably don't need something like this. Um, I mean, I've got a 72 inch extra, which I'm probably just gonna use a standard receiver with a redundancy receiver. It doesn't really need something this big, but there are smaller redundancy bus systems too, in case that's something you wanted to look at. So the newer systems are the ones with the five. So the older ones are stuff like the RB40, uh, the RB30, RB20, which I've got in my drawer over there. The 25, 25S, 35S and 35 are the newer redundancy bus systems, which have some updated features. And most notably, the stabilization is a bit more advanced than the old one. So that's something we'll be looking at and setting that up in a different video. So another couple of options are power switches. So there's a regular sort of power switch and an NFC, which is basically like a, a little plug that you put near a sensor on the plane to switch it on and off. The thing with these is they do draw current. So you, if you get something like this, you still want to have like a physical switch to disconnect the batteries or unplug the batteries once you finish flying. Otherwise they still will drain a bit of power. They're really probably best suited for use at the field. So you don't have to keep unplugging and plugging your battery in but you can switch the model on and off quickly what we have here is the rb35 so what i'm going to do is head over to the desk and we'll see what we get in the box and then we'll come back to the computer and have a little look at the specs okay so this is the box you can see this box is for either the 35 or the 35s and it's yeah just a slide out box and this is what we get inside so We'll come back to this later. Let's just have a quick look at the accessories. So we have some rubber mounting grommets, um, some little brass things that go inside the grommets and some screws. So this is just a basic mounting kit. We have a two wire cable. I don't really know what that's for, possibly a switch or something. Where it's two wires, it's not gonna be for updating or anything like that but yeah this is an led that you can have so you can see it without having to actually see this unit which is something that i requested on the sxr type receivers so maybe it will come to those in the future but the idea is if it's inside your model aircraft you can't actually see the um, status led for when you're doing stuff like calibrations that sort of thing so this led you can plug in have it somewhere you can see it so maybe hidden inside the, the cockpit under the canopy so it's visible to you, but it's not too distracting. And finally, we come to the actual unit itself and the little information card. So this info card 
is just some basic specs that we'll get on the website. One side is a 35, the other is a 35S, and a couple of QR codes which will get the manual. So one thing that you probably will want to know about if you're looking to put this in the model is the size of it. So here we go. We have 74 millimeters that way or 73.4 millimeters that way. 97 millimeters that way and the height and the height is messed up. 23 millimeters. <laughs> there we go. So that's that's the size of the unit and if you're interested in the weight it's 104 grams so let's have a quick overview of this so at the top we have two power inputs so these are for two separate batteries and you can actually decide how these work they can either use one then use the other it can use both at the same time there's a few different options that you can have in the top there's a micro usb there's also this terminal here, which is for the external switch, and there is a micro SD card slot for logging. What we also have is two external power supplies. Now, one is for Vout1 and one is for Vout2. We can actually specify two different sets of voltages on this. So Vout1 will be whatever the V1 is set up as, Vout2 will be whatever V2 is set up as. And you can see which is which by the coloring. So Vout1, is this gold color. So any outputs in the gold color will be using the voltage from Vout1. Vout2, the white will be the, the voltage that's used there. And you can define what you want that to be inside the setup tool. You notice that these are all just numbered. These can be servos, they can be whatever you want. They're all configurable. But what I would probably have is my servos on channels one to nine, especially for control surfaces maybe higher powered servos and then you can set this side up for a higher voltage and then this side could be ancillary stuff which is just running at five volts but you can see we have 24 outputs so every single channel you can use so these six ports at the bottom are a little bit different we have two which are reserved I don't know what they're going to be for or if they're going to be used but there are two extra ports on there so I guess in a future update they could be configured to do something else the next one is our LED, so we just plug that in there. And then we have the three ports for connecting up our receivers. Now the first one is RX1 or smart port. Now when you update this via a cable, you need to use the RX1 port. At the moment, you need to do this via a PC. You can't do it with a transmitter, but I've been told that in a future update, this will be able to be flashed via the transmitter. But that's the port you need to use to update this module. Once you've updated it, it is just a standard receiver port, so you can put whatever receiver you want on there. And also you have RX2 and RX3, which again, you just connect your receivers to. Now, the best way to do this is going to be using FBUS, which you can see it's got a big FBUS logo there. And that makes the setting up so much easier. It's already got the telemetry and the signal already in the one cable, and it can handle everything for you. So I would flash it using uh, the S port on this one and then just use F bus for the receivers. You don't need to use all three, but you have the option of using three. Right, so now we've had a quick look at the actual module itself and we've seen the size and weight of it. Let's have a look at what features it can do. So let's check out the website. And again, they've got the dimensions here, but let's, let's take a look at why you might find this useful, especially in a bigger model. As we've mentioned, it's got the triple receiver redundancy and dual power. So that will give you really nice protection against losing the model in case either power goes or a receiver goes. That's the whole point of this thing. So we have got the dual BEC outputs, as I mentioned. So each BEC has its own XT30 output and you can provide 5 to 8.4 volts output and configurable for each BEC. And all channels are provided with overload protection. So that's something I mentioned earlier as well. So it is a feature on here. Now the RB35S version has got the advanced stabilizer. If you look at the old sort of SXR or SRX receivers, it's basically that sort of on steroids, but we will be covering that in a separate video because it's a little bit more in depth. There are also some telemetry sensors built into the unit. Obviously you're gonna get your battery voltages, all that sort of stuff, but there's also a Vario in there. And what else? 
doesn't say it just says etc so it, to me it seems like there's a a, a vario so it's a, a barometer and a vario so you've got vertical speed and altitude and then the power switch option so as i mentioned with the receivers i said it's best to use just f bus because it's easier but if you had to use something else like s bus it will automatically detect what you're using so all you need to do is plug it in so that's pretty nice so if you go to the download tab and the downloads page, you can get hold of the manual for this. The manual is probably going to have a lot more information in it just so that you can see if this is the right sort of thing for you. This is also where we can download the Lua scripts that we need to configure that on EFOS. Again, we'll be covering that in the installation and the flashing video. But I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the RB35S. I'm not going to give any conclusions on it at the moment because I've not used it. So I don't know. But what we're going to do in the next couple of videos is first we're going to flash it and get it set up you know, with a couple of servos, that sort of thing. The video after that will deal purely with the stabilization, see how that works and how we can get that configured. So hopefully if this has whetted your appetite, you'll check out those videos when they come out. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get them answered as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Blow models like you stole them. See you on the next one. <laughs>